I want to show you how I converted this Dana 44 drum brake axle to a disc brake. This is the original Dana 44 axle that came out of that 73 Bronco. It has the original gearing in it and it was drum brake. I'm using what they call the budget disc brake conversion setup. I'm going to try to explain to you the issues and what you need to do to get this kit to work. The drum is stuck really well onto the hub. So I'm going to remove the hub and then knock it apart. I've got all the screws loose. Give it a little knock, it should come loose. This thing is being a little stubborn, but it's starting to move. I've broken all the bolts loose holding the backing plate on. So just spin them off. I'm going to try pressing this stud out of this hub with a vise. You can't get this thing to sit on there flat because of this edge that's right here. So I cut a big thick washer. Okay, now it sits on there okay. All right, let's see what this does. Here's another method I like. This is uh, from Harbor Freight. It's called a three-in-one tool. It's for doing universal joints and I think ball joints. Again, it wasn't level on the back, so I have to use this washer. And if you have a impact wrench, this goes pretty easy. Probably the easiest way is if you have some sort of hydraulic press. This is a homemade one utilizing a quart of power. For this particular uh, disc brake conversion, the, the hub had to be machined in the back to for the rotor to fit onto the back. Now this one's been machined. This one has not. There's still a rounded area in there. That fits good. If you've got a hydraulic press of some sort, you can install your lug studs. Put your support underneath. Drop your lug screw in. Press it in. Here's another method you can use. Drop your stud in, tap it in a little bit. Put some washers on it. Use a lug nut. Wasn't that hard. Don't need hydraulics. Okay, here's something else I can found when you, that will help when you do it this way. The veins on these rotors are straight. So you can stick one of these large screwdrivers in there as a handle. All right, nice and tight. You want to run a tap through these holes before you assemble it to make sure the, the threads are clear. I like to start mine by hand, make sure that it's threaded properly. I've got a square socket that fits the end of this. Run it slow. You can see the dirt that I got out of that. I'm not gonna put the seal in the hub until after I've got everything fitted just the way I want it. The caliper bracket for the passenger side goes on at 10 o'clock relationship and the driver side goes on at two. The bracket goes this way. Duh. This is without doing any clearancing you can see where that's going to hit. There's the top bolt ran through the caliper. The bottom, you can't even get started. 
Okay, here's what it looks like before I even do any clearancing at all. This is my first test fit after grinding this side. You don't have to put the rotor back on or the pads in to see if that's going to do its clearance. When I clearanced the knuckle on this, I thought I had it all cleared out just the way I needed it. And then I realized as this pad wears and that cylinder pushes in, this whole thing is going to move that direction. So I need just a little more clearance. When clearancing, I guess you could even take a little, little bit of this ridge off of the caliper. Because I noticed on this one it already is ground a little bit. So you could take that off and maybe you wouldn't have to go as far in right here. This is my final grinding. I'm going to take the brackets back off, hit it with a flat disc and paint it. Second side goes so much quicker than the first side. Okay, I've already done the other side, and this is the second side. I had this exact same problem on the other side where this cal this brake pad will not fit in there. I had to shim that out, sixty thousand the hub out, sixty thousandths of an inch to get that to fit. Okay, I'm gonna try to get on this side. 60 thousandths shim, bearing shims. Put my bearing on, and we'll try this again. Okay, after putting in 60 thousandths, it fits right in there. After I had already figured out the 60 thousandths shims on the hub to make that fit, I found out that you could take and put a punch in there and hit this with the hammer and knock that bracket out a little bit in the top and the bottom, and you pro I probably wouldn't have needed the shims. But I did end up trying to do the punch thing on this bracket. I found it very difficult. I didn't make very good progress, and I ended up messing up the threads where this pin goes through and had to retap it. I tried clamping the bracket down on this setup and using the Porta Power jaws to spread it open. And that wasn't that easy either. When you shim the hub out 60 thousandths of an inch, you get an issue with the jaws of the locking hub not quite being able to separate far enough. I ended up bending the ears a little bit on the actuator to push those locking jaws just a little farther apart. So I've given it some thought. If you could remove a 60 thousandths off of the back of this hub, this material right here is about a half inch thick. That could move the rotor over and you'd have your clearance. Or you could take it off of the face you could take it off the face of the spindle, or you could do 30 thousandths off the face of the spindle and 30 thousandths off the back of the hub to get your clearance for the pad to go in. Before I wrap this up completely, I had done a Willwood conversion several years ago, found it to be very easy, no machining or clearancing required. In conclusion, I think this conversion was a little more tedious than it should have been. And it wasn't the fact that you had the clearance for the caliper, that was fine. The machining on the back of the hub, that was okay. But when this pad would not fit in between there and you had to do 60 thousandths, that's what I didn't like. And the problems that come along with doing that so, take the information that I've given you and come to your own conclusion. Marvelous.